She sings and plays guitar. Who else is in Alaska? So am I. Who else is in Alaska? So I'm going to have some changes. Mm. At the moment, um, no, I shouldn't say at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there's six of us. Um, there's, uh, the original members are me, Justin on drums, and Annie on bass. She actually left and came back in. We've got a new guitar player called Paul, who's fantastic. Music and keyboards and shouting and um we've got uh Dave Bush doing machines and keys and um what you've got a new album coming out. Mm-hmm. Um it's been about five years since the first one. What's happened to your sound since then? Um well I think when we first started this record we wanted our sound to change quite a lot. And it's probably gone full circle, to be honest. Because I think in the end, it dawned on me that um, the, probably every band is kind of, uh, what they do, they do best, and you can push it. And I think it's probably bigger sounding and mm. maybe um, a bit more ambitious in certain ways, arrangement-wise and stuff. But um, generally, I think it's still sort of sounding quite elastic. Have you collaborated with anyone outside of this group? Yeah, um, we've done some songs with Mark Smith before, and um, there's a couple of songs on the record written by, co-written by Love Hardy, who I live with. He used to be a kingmaker. Don't live with him in the biblical sense, but um, we co it. <laughs> Are you playing any of those songs tonight? Yeah, we're doing um, one of them. It's called Mindset. Are you playing um, old stuff on the first record? Yeah, we're doing, I think we're doing 10 new ones and 8 old ones tonight. Um, how did you deal with the pressure of having to put out your second record? I didn't deal with the pressure of having to put a second record out very well, to be honest. Um, we did so much touring on the first record. We were all so knackered when we got back, and we didn't really like each other very much by that point. Um, and it did take a good sort of couple of years to actually want to do it again, to be honest. What do you think happened in music since you first came out? It's changed a lot. <laughs> Not a lot's really happened, I don't think. I mean, it, um, and I think that's really the problem. Uh, guitar bands become really unfashionable. Because, mm. um, I don't know, I guess there's been nothing that great out there. I think the new Super Furries record's brilliant. Apart from that, I don't really like anything new at the moment. So, um, in that in that sense, it's kind of a weird time to sing out a record like we're about to put out. But um, I don't know. I think the only way you're going to change it is by putting good records out. So. But do you find that you're listening to the same stuff that you were listening to when you were recording and finishing your first record? No, um, I've been listening to lots of different music. Um, I think probably. Um, you know, things change and you feel different and you meet different people and that sort of thing influence your kind of musical taste. I've actually been listening to a lot of black music, but I don't think you can really hear it in our sound or anything. <laughs> um, no, so it's a little bit irrelevant. Um, you know, where did, how did you guys hook up? Uh, we sort of met each other really through mutual friends and um, just got on really well together because I'm in another band too and she came and saw us play a few times and um, she asked me to join. I didn't want to at first, but then I said yeah. <laughs> Why didn't you want to? Because I didn't think I could do it. What's the other band you were in? Heave. Like an indie band. And I sort of played keyboards in that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Are you finding pressure of coming into a band that's only six thousand albums? Huh? Uh, not really, no. I mean, it's quite weird because obviously it's a lot more successful than the other bands, I and mean, so it's really different to have the two in both things. But um, f- from inside the band, everyone's really nice and lovely, and it's just been really good fun. And I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe I will get some sort of 
nasty things or weird things said because I'm replacing Donna. Do you know what I mean? It might, it might be quite weird, but it's been all right so far from outside people. I think it's good though, because you're not playing guitar, so mm. you're not, it's not like it's a, it's not a direct spot, it's mm. such a different vibe that you've got and what you do. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's any, I mean, we can talk about songs and stuff, I mean, I don't know if there's, if it's worth to chat about a couple of songs uh -huh. off the new record. Yeah, we can talk about Mad Dog, actually. Yeah. Um, because I've, I've written that down on the list. Um, Mad Dog's, um, the first song that I had to go programming, um, and I think David's really ashamed of <laughs> what it sounds like. People walking past his room. Kind of sticking my head around the door again. Is this you, that? Dave's got I've a <laughs> Yeah. Because it starts with um, dogs barking. We had a little kiddies keyboard. So we did the riff out and dogs barking. Dave was going, oh, my, I'm not going to live this down. He likes and, it now. Uh, yeah, he likes it now. But, um, yeah, that's our, that was my first attempt at programming. And, uh, I'm trying to think what else. What else did you like? What's wrong? Um... Is there an old, old song that you didn't like? Yeah, Stata. She's our first single I wrote there. Um, it's really good fun to play live, that one. I was going to say, have you found that now that you're playing with different people, that the old songs have sort of changed? Yeah, the old songs definitely sound different with a um, different line up. You know, everyone's kind of, everyone taps their foot in a slightly different way or whatever, you know. But um, it's really nice actually because. It's nice that seeing um, Paul on Mule ever getting a buzz out of playing a song that they might have, you know, heard on the radio or heard at a gig. And, you know, sometimes I look over at Paul and he's kind of leaping around, connection or whatever. And I used to have said to me before, you know, just get the buzz out of kind of playing that because it doesn't sort of, you, you sort of know that it's a fan or whatever. Mm. So that's really nice, to kind of, it sort of lifts us all, I think, which is cool. And you're looking forward to tonight because I know that, that you know you've been you've been away from the from the live thing mm. already. You've got a couple mm. of shows. Mm. Is it nice to actually come back and see reactions of people and actually stand there and play songs? Yeah, I really I really like the live side of being in a band, and I think that um, when Africa's working, we work best as a kind of live thing where you're kind of not making any decisions. It's just an instant thing, and it's a visceral thing. And I think. Um, when we're good, <laughs> we're, that's, we're sort of at our best like that, really. And are you, are you now out and playing for the rest of the year? Yeah, so if I, every single day. If I ask you that question in 12 months' time, you're <laughs> like sick of playing. <laughs> um, I do get quite sick of playing when we just loads and loads of touring, but more because it's, it's horrible when you start feeling like you're going through the motions. I think. You know, having a new lineup and having loads of new songs on the set obviously kind of resolve that totally. But yeah, I mean, when you're doing like two years doing kind of the same people, the same set, it's hard going for anyone. I'll sort of challenge anyone to enjoy yeah. it at that point, really. You know. In the honeymoon period. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Um, the, the last EP was quite lo-fi, mm. um, six tracks, mm. it's funny. Mm. Um, is the new album going to be lo-fi? No, the album isn't lo-fi at all really, um, there's a couple of songs on it that I guess you could very loosely term lo-fi, but um, generally it sounds quite polished. Um, and with the EP, I just felt like we had to put something out. We had to get something out because when you waste that long, it's just it's just like having a kind of mental block. And I just knew that as soon as we put something out, almost anything, we'd kind of feel better and, it, and we'd be able to progress in what we were doing. Right. And um, so as a result, we put out kind of basically five demos yeah. and one and a song that had been um, all worked on. But you know, it was a so it's a demo thing. So was that a way of um, taking the pressure off you with the album? Well, it wasn't so much taking the pressure off, it's just kind of dealing with the process because we had all this material and I just felt very hung up on some of the actual recordings of the demos. 
and I felt like we couldn't progress beyond them. Mm -hmm. I knew that they were too raw for records. I knew if I put them out, it would kind of force us to move on one way or another, either drop the song or do a totally different version of it, or just kind of move on in some way. It was more kind of a personal um, thing, just working through it. Yeah, therapy. Yeah, kind of therapy. So you must have quite a few songs ready for this new album. Is it hard to boil it down to what the world mm. based on making songs? No, it wasn't really because even though we had quite a lot of material, it was really quite mixed and it had been done by lots of different people over a long period of time. And in the end, what we what I've done is I've just put on the material that this band is to, that is together now right. recording. Um, there's only like a couple, like there's two tracks, whatever, that aren't, you know, the whole band playing on it. So, um, in a way, we kind of made that decision after the EP came out. We went back in to just like re record and blitz it really quickly. Yeah. And did you find doing it really quickly was Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was. I mean, I think, you know, any band's going to work better like that. Once you're kind of, trying to listen to the same songs over and over again, it just drives you nuts. And I think we just kind of went into weird production overdrive mode and we were all fighting for a while. And, um, and I think, you know, it was, with, with this lineup as it is, six of them, it's just been so much more sort of straight ahead and it's been easy to make decisions and it feels like everyone's enjoying it. So, yeah. you know, it can be quite quick. You did one of those gigs as well, didn't we? It could sound yeah. so much more different live. Mm -hmm. We just, as soon as we finished Reading. Yeah. yeah, we got back from Reading and um, I was just like, I really think we should just go in for like six weeks and just blitz the whole lot again because it seemed to me like it was a lot more exciting to play yeah, exactly. songs live than the recordings we have, which kind of quite varied. And, uh, so our management nearly had a heart attack. <laughs> our record company did have a heart attack. And we went in and did it anyway um, at our friend's studio, so it was a very kind of low budget thing. But the irony is, you know, that everyone thinks it's taken us whatever, four, four and a half years to make this. And we actually recorded it in like six <laughs> 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 So difficult. Four years and six years. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's, it, what's it like having Annie back in the band? Mm. It's really great. I never want to be in a band that doesn't have any in it again. Um, what kind of influence does she have on the, on the dynamic? Um, well, she's very punk, so... Amazing bass player. Yeah, and she's an amazing bass player. And I think that our sound's probably more bass-driven than anything, in a way, especially live. Um, and she can just play anything, you know, you can think of any riff and she can play it. Right. So I think it wasn't really until she left that I realised how much we wrote for the bass and how much it was driven by the bass riff. Okay. Um, do you have a title for the album? Yeah, it's called The Menace. Menace. Okay. Um, I think that's about it. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.